Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing three reasons why Linux is better than Windows for the average computer user, as well as three reasons why it is not. But first, let's be honest, two of the most popular reasons that people typically recommend Linux are that it doesn't cost anything and that it respects your privacy. The problem with these reasons is although Linux does not have a monetary cost, it still has a cost in time in that people must learn a brand new operating system, which can cost money, especially in a business environment. The reason for privacy is not a concern for most users, as they typically use Facebook, Google and other social or privacy invading platforms, so suggesting to new users that Linux respects privacy is a waste of time. People will always choose convenience over anything. Therefore this video will instead focus on the average user, someone who is not a power user, nor a Linux enthusiast, but someone who just uses a computer as nothing more than an appliance. They have no interest in learning or indeed know what an operating system is. So just to set the record straight, I'm not an average user, as I have a dual boot setup of Windows and Linux on my desktop. More specifically, I run Windows 11 and Ubuntu, and I have been for the best part of four years to this point. I generally have an interest in technology, including Linux, and I use my installation of Ubuntu for recording and producing content for this channel, general internet browsing and gaming. Although I have no aversion to using Windows, especially for games that do not either work, have poor performance, or even supported features under Linux. What I'm trying to say is that since I use both operating systems in my personal and professional life daily, I can see the advantages and disadvantages of both because, let's face it, neither is without flaws. So Linux reason number one. Linux is without a doubt the best option when it comes to installing and keeping software up to date. In Linux, in 99% of cases, you've installed software from a single location, the distribution's repository. Of course there are other options out there such as snaps, flat packs, app images, or even compiling software yourself, but it would be very unlikely that an average user would ever do this. Often what they would do is open up a software store and then install software from there. The software that you install is safe and doesn't require you to go searching and downloading installation packages from random websites on the internet, which may contain unwanted software. Furthermore, in Linux, it is possible to update the entire system, including all installed software and drivers, with a single command. And this is something that is fundamentally not possible with Windows. In other words, although you can download and update Windows, anything that's installed externally will need to be updated manually, with the exception for web browsers which do tend to automatically update. Outdated software is often a source of exploits on Windows system, with outdated Java being a popular target, second to web browsers, and then finally outdated commercial software such as Microsoft Office. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people who come from Linux to Windows have an aversion to updating, and this is mainly due to a bad experience with Windows, but it doesn't matter what operating system you use, you must keep it up to date. In summary, Linux is better than Windows when it comes to software installation because you have all the available software in a curated location. So Windows reason number one, software availability and hardware support. Although I have just mentioned that installing software on Linux is better, Windows has the largest amount of software available on the PC platform since it is the dominant operating system and developers will always target it over Linux simply because it has the best return on investment. Plus commercial software such as Microsoft Office, Adobe Suite and most pieces of CAD software are exclusive to Windows and will likely never be available on Linux. That being said, other proprietary software such as Spotify, Microsoft Teams, Discord, Zoom, Skype and TeamViewer are available on Linux but will often lack some of the functionality found in the Windows version. Video games are a perfect example of this. Borderlands 2, although this is a native game on Linux, it does not have some of the content found in the Windows version, as the original developers have abandoned support in the game. The good news, however, is to my knowledge, the most popular web browsers on Windows are available on Linux. Same with popular open source projects such as VLC, LibreOffice and OBS Studio. Windows also has the largest amount of available drivers with a wide range of hardware, including VR headsets, capture cards, WLAN cards, and mixers, which sometimes have little to no support on Linux, or the functionality is crippled compared to using the hardware directly with Windows. However, CPUs and GPUs are fully supported on Linux, assuming you've installed the correct driver or microcode. At the end of the day, if you have a dependency on commercial software, such as Microsoft Office, you have no desire to learn an alternative product, and you want almost guaranteed compatibility with your hardware, then unfortunately Linux is going to be a bad choice for you. Reason number two for using Linux over Windows, permissions and security. 
So when it comes to security, Linux is better than Windows, mainly due to how Linux handles user permissions. By default on Linux, you are a user without administrative or root privileges. And this means that you need to elevate yourself to root in order to install or make any system-wide changes. In theory, this prevents you from doing something stupid like deleting system folders. Well, at least if you're not blindly copying and pasting terminal commands off the internet. In contrast, on Windows, everyone uses the administrator account as the limited account is useless. But the problem with the administrator account is that a user can then install anything and make changes without any real consequence. I'm old enough to remember the days of Windows XP where you could literally visit a website and it would automatically download and install malware into your system and there was nothing you could do to stop it. Microsoft did try to rectify this in Windows Vista with the User Account Control or UAC, but people complained about it, so they tweaked the number of prompts in Windows 7 and newer. The problem with UAC is not UAC, as it is a good idea in theory, but people just become accustomed to allowing anything without checking the prompts which in the end completely defeated the object of making a user aware that they're making system-wide changes. Linux also doesn't have the problem with malware that Windows does. And although I can honestly say that I've not encountered any malware in my systems for at least 10 years, an average user might do. In particular, ransomware is a huge problem on Windows. In summary, on Linux, for every change you make, you must confirm it by typing in the password. So it's very unlikely that you'll accidentally mess up your system or malicious software will run unless you explicitly tell it to do so. So reason number two for using Windows over Linux, support for HDR, G-Sync, FreeSync, and variable refresh rates. Unfortunately, Linux lacks what I would consider standard features of a modern operating system. This includes HDR support, support for multiple monitors with different resolutions and refresh rates, and the ability to use G-Sync or FreeSync on multiple monitors. The HDR support is a particular sore spot for me, and part of the reason I've been using Windows 11 more recently mainly because it supports my HDR monitor. I've been playing a ton of Age of Empires 4 recently and at 1440p with HDR enabled, the game looks fantastic. Contrast that to Linux where performance is arguably worse, the game doesn't look as good, and at the end of the day, I paid for a gaming monitor, so I intend to use it to its full capabilities. Windows 11 also includes auto HDR for older titles without native support of HDR, which again is something that Linux just simply doesn't support. If I'm honest, for Linux to increase market share, especially for gamers, it really needs to put these technologies out of the box. An average user may not consider the technicalities of why this isn't, isn't available on Linux, but in short, if they intend to use HDR or if they have m multiple monitors, they're probably not going to end up using Linux. So the third reason why Linux is better than Windows, the Linux community. One thing that Linux has that Windows does not have is a community. Now I know there are certain members that will Pepsi gatekeep or prevent Linux adoption, but for most people in the Linux community, they're well-meaning and they're decent people. And they'll also be willing to help you out with any problems, assuming of course you've done some independent research beforehand. You only have to look at open source projects such as Mango Hood or Lutris that saw a missing feature in Linux and then took it upon themselves to come up with a solution. In this case it was an overlay within game to show system resource consumption or making it easy to install Windows developed games on Linux using community based scripts. You also need to consider something like ProtonDB, which is a community based website that tracks how easy it is to get games running using the Valve's Proton compatibility layer, which, if you think about it, is a miracle in, in amongst itself. Now, I mean, you could argue that this is all of this isn't strictly needed on Windows as games are designed to work on Windows, but the only solution you'll ever find for Windows for a faulty game is to reinstall the game, update drivers, or restart your computer, which does not always fix the problem. On Linux, if you've got a problem, you will have people who are knowledgeable enough that will be able to strive to find a solution. And I can agree with all my time troubleshooting both Linux and Windows, every time I've found it easier to find a solution for Linux than Windows. In summary, Windows is the dominant operating system, but an average user will always struggle to troubleshoot, whereas with Linux, you do have the community to help you out. So the final reason why Windows is better than Linux is browser acceleration and video streaming. If you play videos using any browser on Linux on a laptop, you will suffer from poorer battery life. The main reason for that is that out of the box, modern browsers on Linux do not support hardware decoding, in which a video is decoded using a GPU at reduced power consumption rather than using the CPU directly. The result, unfortunately, is that if you have an older CPU that can play 1440p and above video on Windows, it will struggle to play the same video on Linux. Now granted, with some additional libraries and some tweaking, 
It is possible to get hardware decoding to work on Linux, but this is going to be over the head of an average user. Windows supports the highest resolution of all the online stream services such as Netflix, Disney Plus and Amazon Video, whereas on Linux you're typically limited to 720p. In summary, if you've got a laptop and you wish to stream on the go, then just stick with Windows. You'll get much better power management and battery life. So with that, I've given you three reasons why Linux is better than Windows, as well as three reasons why it is not better than Windows for the average user. At the end of the day, both Linux and Windows have issues, but I would still think for 99% of compute users, I would recommend Windows over Linux. The lack of software availability, certain hardware support, and what I would consider default operating system technologies does really hurt adoption. That being said, if you're an enthusiast like myself, give Linux a try. Install an old computer or get an SSD and dual boot along your Windows installation. Storage is dirt cheap at the moment compared to GPU prices. Either way, with that it brings this video to an end. Do you agree with me or do you think I'm talking rubbish? Let me know in the comment section below. Just remember to keep it civil. Either way, I'll see you again very soon. Bye now!